Welcome to this session of Talking Tech, Women, and Girls in ICT. My name is Iman Al-Noor, and I'm excited to be having a discussion about tech and tech careers with Dr. Parul Adrawal, who is the project manager for Orion Multipurpose Crew Vehicle Operations at NASA Ames Research Center. Talking Tech is a series celebrating girls and women in tech being recorded around the world between Girls in ICT Day 2020 and Girls in ICT Day 2021. Girls in ICT Day is an international day marked on the fourth Thursday of each April. The objectives of Girls in ICT Day are to help to create a global environment that empowers and encourages girls and young women to consider studies and careers in the growing field of information and communication technologies. The Talking Tech series is brought to you by the ITU, UNICC, and the Office of the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Youth, and is in support of EQUALS, the Global Partnership for Gender Equality in the Digital Age. The goals of this series include to interest and inspire girls and younger women with information about a range of ICT careers that can be had, bring before a broader audience some of the role model women in tech, and share information about their career journeys and work, offer diverse examples of how ICT is being used to support achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals and other UN goals, showcase initiatives that are working with girls to support them in ICT studies or future ICT careers, and provide girls and young women in tech with a leadership opportunity to represent and promote a girls in tech organization with which they are involved and promoted to a broader international audience. Personally, a more gender balanced tech sector is something that I am passionate about and hoping to work towards too. So now I'm delighted to shift to a conversation with Dr. Peru Adraval, who is the project lead for Orion and Multipurpose Crew Vehicle Operations at NASA Ames Research Center. To start this off, would you mind introducing yourself and telling us more about when and how did you get in technology? Hello, Iman. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And it's very nice to meet with you. As a kid, I loved science and I loved watching the videos like NASA at work. I used to read biographies and discoveries by Marie Curie, Alexander Graham Bell, Thomas Edison, and I was very inspired by their work and their discoveries. I wanted to be like them. Uh, my first serious introduction to technology happened when I had an opportunity to join Indian Institute of Technology and study aerospace engineering. Indian Institute of Technology, it's really hard. They have a very competitive entrance exam and only 1% of the entrance, people who are taking those entrance exam make it to the college admission. And I was fortunate enough to study aerospace engineering there. I was the only girl in my class of mechanical and aerospace engineering. I got introduced to subjects like aerodynamics, flight mechanics, control system. And that's how I started learning about technology. And I realized that I loved all these subjects. What was it like being the only woman in your class? It was a culture shock. I came from all female school. All my elementary school, middle school, and high school was in all girls college. And when I came to IIT, it was pretty much all males college. There were very, very few girls. Mm -hmm. It took me some time to adjust to a very different environment. Also, a lot of those male students, they were coming from all boys school. So mm -hmm. it was very different for them also to have female students around them. They were very uncomfortable asking me to be their project partner. And if somebody gathered courage, the other students would tease them. So I learned to be working on my own. Sometimes I had to work two or three times as hard because they will all be working in a group environment and I will be doing my own project. But I learned a lot. I learned to do things on my own and it prepared me for hard tasks in my life as I grew in my career. What was your path from then studying and to now? So after I finished my undergrad from IIT, I got selected in University of Texas mm -hmm. and I came to US on a research assistantship. And after a year of finishing graduate school in University of Texas, I moved to Purdue University to do a PhD in aeronautics and astronautics. My research was in high temperature materials for aerospace, and I love my research environment there. In my grad school, I also met a fellow grad student, and we got married. And we were then trying to get 
jobs together, Silicon Valley was one of the places where two PhDs could get meaningful jobs. So that's how I came to Silicon Valley. And I started in advanced research and development at IBM in the hard disk drive division. But after about three years of working there, I realized that I'm very passionate about aerospace and I wanted to go back to aerospace roots. Mm -hmm. And so I joined uh, NASA Ames Research Center and spent about 11 years in the entry systems division, developing the heat shield material, testing at very high temperature, looking at all the heat shield systems and aeroshell designs for entry probes. Because when we send a probe to another planet, we need to make sure all the instruments are safe as they're entering in very high speed, say into a Jupiter environment or Martian environment. The same thing for human heat shield when we are bringing astronauts back from space. The spacecraft enters at a very high speed and we have to make sure that when they're going to experience really high heating, the astronauts and all the equipment on board is protected. And so that's why it's very important to develop the right technologies for thermal protection mm -hmm. systems. And that's what I was working for 11 years. About two years ago, I got opportunity in the programs and projects management division. That's where I joined and I started managing Orion project operations at Ames. And that's my current role right now. Oh, that sounds amazing. What would you say you like best about your current job right now? I really enjoy working with multiple teams. What we are doing right now is we are making sure that we develop the best heat shield to bring our astronauts back from moon. And AIMS plays a very key role in developing these technologies, testing it out. Also, we have some very smart engineers in our team who are looking at the aerothermal environments. They can predict how hot the atmosphere is going to get and what heating the spacecraft is going to experience. So managing all those operations, making sure that our team is meeting its milestones, our analysis are all validated, uh, that's my responsibility. And I, I love my job. I can imagine. That sounds really great. Is there anything that you find you are to be particularly proud of that you'd like to share? Orion is part of the Artemis program, and we are going to be launching next year. Our team cannot wait to have our first launch. And once that happens, I think we'll be all very proud. We have been working on this program for a whole decade. Artemis is going to send first woman to the moon. So that would be a history. First American woman landing on the moon. And we cannot wait to have that happen within a few years. Our target is to send the first woman to the moon in 2024. Mm -hmm. That would be a very proud moment for our agency. For my personal accomplishment besides Orion, there are a couple of projects that I really liked. One is we are working on lunar mapping and in general planetary mapping. We are developing this app called Celestial Mapping System that's going to basically provide the visualization for all the surface maps on moon. And then we're going to extend it to Martian surface and planets of uh, Jupiter, Enceladus, Titan. So that's another project that I'm very, very excited about. And I'm very proud of the team, my software team that's developing the application. Another project I would like to mention is we designed a probe to send instruments to Uranus and Neptune that are ice giants in our solar system. And that was another very challenging project that I worked with a team of mission designers, planetary scientists. So those are some of the projects that I had an opportunity to work on. And each of these projects have been very exciting. Yeah, that sounds really great. I can imagine sending the first woman to the moon. That's a big moment in time that I'll I'm very excited to have my eye out for and definitely the project that you'll be launching. I will definitely be having my eye out for that as well. And I would like to ask, as you are tackling all these different projects, have you encountered any challenges along the way? And if so, do you have any advice for our viewers out there on how to overcome them? One of the big challenge I have faced is the work-life balance, especially in COVID time. I have a son who has special needs and I have to make sure that we support him. 
at the same time, we have such fascinating projects that I want to make sure that we devote full energy and making sure that we are meeting our milestones. So the work-life balance has been a big challenge, always been a big challenge, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm sure there are other women out there who face the same challenge. One of the way I have tried to overcome this challenge is by being very disciplined and doing a meticulous planning. I make sure that we have a good communication. I have my home team, which includes my husband, my son's teacher, all the therapists, and then the same thing at work. All the engineers, all the engineering leads I work with, my own supervisor, I have a very good communication and we lay out all the plans to make sure everything is getting executed. And if we have any issues, then we are communicating. I can imagine being a mother is definitely a full-time job, so I applaud you for that. Thank you. I was wondering also, do you have any activities beyond your job that you'd like to share with us? Basically, besides Orion, I'm working on this mapping project, which takes up a lot of time, supporting my son and his needs. That takes up a lot lot of time. So just balancing all of that requires a lot of commitment and a lot of time. It doesn't leave time for any other activity. I do try to publish uh, from time to time. And that's another message to the women out there that do share your work because I feel I haven't published enough. And at times I wish that all my work I could write up in journal articles or in reports and share it with public at large. And I constantly find that challenge to find time. But that's another message that I would like to give out to the women out there. I can imagine for sure that it's hard to find the time. But thank you so much for this advice. You led me right on to my next session, which is since this series is about girls and women in technology, that is great career or tech advice in general for women who are pursuing careers in tech to publish their work and put it out there to have access for all. Yeah, so that way people get to see what cool work all the women are capable of doing. So I feel this is really important to talk about their work and share it with public at large. And definitely inspiring for other women who be looking up to that. So thank you so much for sharing. So could I ask you some questions? Of course. How did you get involved in tech? I started getting interested more in technology during high school when I had various club opportunities open to me. But being part of a generation that just grew up with technology all around them, it's always been some aspect of my life. However, during high school, I had the opportunity to join a club called Teen Tech, and we were able to organize this tech conference at the Microsoft Center in New York. And it allowed us to invite teenagers to learn and get involved more with technology. And we had some speakers talk about where they're involved in tech and give career advice and more information about how to get involved, which was really inspiring to me. After that, I was also able to become a camp counselor for a STEM camp for younger students. And I found that to be really a great opportunity for me because I was able to learn a lot and also seeing all these young individuals learn and be motivated by what they were doing was really inspiring inspiring to me as well. Yeah, especially seeing all the young girls and women out there who are really uh, passionate about being part of that camp. Yeah, that sounds very exciting. And, and I'm glad that you know they are enabling young women to have this opportunity. So if you get a chance, what would be your dream job as you're working on your education at NYU and you're learning about being the media specialist? What would you like to do in your future? So far, I'm still trying to explore all the different opportunities that may be out there, but I'm really interested in exploring more the intersection of media and technology and public health. It's very relevant in the world we currently live in with our COVID-19 reality, how technology may come out as very useful tools in public health. So that is something that I definitely want to explore more in the future and be a part of. Yeah, this is going to be really relevant in today's environment. So I'm really glad that you're doing that. Do you have any message for young women and also women who are further in their career, not so young women like us? My message for other young women and girls in tech who want to get more involved is not to hesitate to seek out organizations or maybe 
clubs and school that interest you because it's definitely a great starting point to be able to start off exploring that area and hone in onto what interests you most. So definitely not to hesitate and reach out to people. It's a great message for all of us. Thank you so much, Dr. Adra. That wraps up our session today for Talking Tech, Women, Girls, and ICT. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed our chat today. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. And thank you so much to our viewers for watching.